Hi, we ain't got no time for a real intro because it's gonna be a busy week. Today is Sunday, we are in the smack dab middle of January 2023, and I have no idea why I'm filming this vlog other than just to give you content, I guess. Maybe we can all stop pretending that content needs to have a reason. I think it's just here to fill the void of our lives. Isn't it? I hope this hodgepodge of chaos pleases you in the end. We started today off with a Boots try-on. Well, actually, before that, we started with a protein shake after I came back from the gym, and then we tried on these boots that y'all gave me money to buy, so thank you so very much for these Birkenstocks. They are all leather, they were $350 plus tax, and uh, probably the most expensive thing I've ever bought for myself outside of a computer and a camera. We took them for a walk half hour to Massbeth where I met up with some friends at a bar where they were streaming that Bills game and are they comfortable? So far, not yet. I think there's a blister on the back of my left foot, but hopefully we'll break them in with the many, many, many walks we'll take in them. Yes, the Bills did win, so go Bills. After the Bills game wrapped, we went to an Italian deli in Nazbeth. I got a block of cacio cavallo cheese, and I'm about to eat it with my friend Dan tomorrow. But before I get ahead of myself, I don't know why he does that. In the asshole rubbing his face on the box. Just saying hi. Yeah, but what's he rubbing his face for? Hi, baby. Yeah, he obeys me now. My every command. He's a dog. Mm-hmm. Freddy. Look, does he look like a dog? Yes, my favorite dog ever. Liver paste. And, oh, it's probably just fat. Ew. I think it's okay. That's I don't really know, gross. I've been eating it, but I haven't died yet. I found my keycap puller. Cool. Yeah, so if you put a key on wrong, you yeah. can fix it. Tonight, I will be meeting up with my middle school friend, Wen. He's gonna take me to Sugarfish. We're gonna have some sushi, and hopefully that's my Sunday. <laughs> I will say right now that if you came to this vlog expecting me to cook a ton this week like I did the last time we did one of these vloggies, nah, I don't think so. It's a pretty busy week, but I will take you on some walks. And yeah, obviously I'll be cooking because I'll be eating because no matter how busy your girl gets, she's got to eat. She's very hungry. And because I know this week's gonna be really busy, I'm gonna get a head start on making grandma some food. We're gonna start with some millet congee. We're gonna make it in the instant pot just so it breaks all the way down because grandma just hit 95. Her teeth, they're in there. Just, uh, you know, 95 year old teeth. Now, normally for Chinese congee, I would usually put some sort of like jujube in there, lotus seed, nutritional stuff. I don't have any of that, but I do have some honey roasted cashews. What is that weird noise? I also have some peanuts, and I also have some cornmeal, and we're just gonna throw it all in there with some water, a little pinch of salt, and a little bit of sugar, and just set it and forget it. Don't trademark me, copyright me on that, please. In the meantime, I'm gonna eat a piece of chocolate, prep some vegetables for this upcoming week so I don't get lazy about it, and wait for my friend to come pick me up for sushi. Just as a side note, I'm not a huge fan of sushi, especially New York City sushi. It's like pricey and just mediocre unless you go for the really good stuff, but it's a free meal. Thank you, Wen. One of you told me that Trader Joe's Pound Plus chocolate bars have lead in them. Is that fake news? I guess I don't care. To prep my veggies, I just like to give them a good wash, peel what needs to be peeled, discard what needs to be discarded, and I'm gonna chop them up and so they're ready for roasting or stir frying or, you know, eating raw. We have those days. Perfect for roasting tomorrow. Uh, same reason why we arm Ukraine, right? Uh, but U.S. Is, is not going to World War III over Ukraine, and U.S. certainly is not going to go to World War III over Taiwan. Come on, lighting. No, my vlogs are like so crap. Is that with your set? Wow. It's just the way I grew up, you know. No, I never knew that was a thing. That's why. You can also eat it, so I can get an acting shot. <laughs> You're like, I did not sign up for this. You can go for it. You don't have to wait for me. I know. I will respect your... Oh, I love organic shots. Where there's like hands and chopsticks moving. So you just do you, man. You do you. Well, no, you have to get your regular before shot first. No, I'm not like that. Alright. You do whatever you want. Wait, which one's the least fatty? That one. This one. Okay. And then, is that the most fatty? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So we always go from... Lean to I think the other piece was better. Well, shots. This is the, uh... Wait, are you paying a toll on this? Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, you 
only miss them when they're gone. Do I want to ask? Uh, not tell them. We start this Monday slightly sleep deprived, a little bit depressed, and forever longing for a relationship that doesn't hurt you more than it loves you. But anyway, we make some fried donuts for Lala. We zoom with uncle in Beijing. <laughs> 感觉还行啊 都没食了。奶香味，我觉得是我上一次用了一杯奶，然后也用了玉米粉，所以我觉得玉米粉也容易奶香味。We bring the kanji that we made along with oranges and the fried dough to grandma, and we take her out for a walk to bathe in the sun and just breathe. Hello, thank you so much. Good morning. Oh, I can get it. Oh, oh. Uh, those are hot, Ah. Hi, oh, young guy. Hey. No, I don't know. Hey. Mm. 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 看得见自己吗 生命最重要的<笑> 明天见<笑> Today I'm going to go to Forest Hills to go to a boxing class This is the last place where I saw mom in person before she passed away And I think it's time to revisit it We're just gonna hang out and eat some cheese And in preparation for that, we're gonna go ahead and roast some vegetables All the ones that we cut up yesterday, I'm gonna toss in a little bit of salt, oil, pepper, what have you Throw it on some trays, roast it at 375 until they look a little bit caramelized. In the meantime, I'll be making some new yo tail dough for Lalo because we ran out. I'll be following roughly my generic recipe for yo tail, but I'm going to add in a little bit of cornmeal as well as milk to make it extra rich because grandma deserves the best. If I need a little bit more to make that dough a little bit looser, I can add it in in a drizzle. If you find that you've added too much liquid, you can always go in with a tablespoon or two more of dries, AP, cornmeal, or cornstarch. We're going to stir that dough until it comes together, and we're gonna to continue to knead it until it has some sort of a cohesive shape to it. Then we're going to cover and let it rest, and we'll give it a couple of folds throughout the day before putting it away in a closed container in the fridge to rest overnight. Obviously don't do this if you're sensitive or immunosuppressed, but I always like to taste my work at every stage. If this week feels like it's achronological, that's because it is. Sometimes your mind doesn't stay in one timeline. It might not even be in one piece, one place, one self. When you start to smell the onions and the cauliflower cooking, go ahead, take the tray out, give it a flip, make sure everything's being cooked evenly all across. 
No birth bits, just deliciousness. I am very, very sad today. It took a while for it to sink in, just how much of it was fatigue, how much of it was post-COVID, and how much of it was depression. Perhaps a little bit of grief and disappointment mixed in there too. Here is the street that I walked on when I last met mom in person before she died. Here is the street that we crossed together. And here is the bench that we sat down at. Here is where we had our last argument. And there are so many changes to this neighborhood that I didn't see until today. And it's almost as if the past is no longer there. Here is the pole that I said bye to mom at. Here is where she wanted to give me a hug and I turned her down. Here is where we said goodbye and me feeling so much anger as such non-consequential things. In hindsight, what is of consequence? I boxed, I came out, I met Dan at the cheese shop. I might want one more cheese though. Aldi doesn't have good bread, bro. I know that for sure. Where's good bread? And it was by the time that we went into another store to grab some groceries that I realized how absolutely exhausted my mind was and how much I didn't want to do this video anymore. But I had started it. And you know me for presenting all of it, even when things are not great. Real moody up in here. Fantastic lighting. So here it is. Do we have plates? You didn't get a plate. You're just eating out of the tub. That's gross. Just a day of me being depressed, despite being in good, friendly company. Do you have a cracker yet? Despite having all these wonderful groceries and cheeses at the touch of my fingertips. Mm, it's sweet. I'm moist. Like, hey. Despite Dan making me a nice pot of mush, into which I melted cheese which made it all the more delicious. I loved this bread. It was soft and moist with just a nice touch of burnt rye around the hearty crust. The contrast made it perfect for cheese and hummus. And Dan bought me hummus, which I put on my roasted veggies. And we ate it all and it was lovely. And I was still sad. And on the walk home, I thought, Hmm. This feels a little bit like when you are underwater and you open your eyes to see around you. And you can make things out, sure, but you can't really keep your eyes open all that long. It stings. And things are blurry, even when they're close. And that's what today felt like. So, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Sometimes the most anxiety-inducing part about making content is how your brain always tries to frame the story before it happens. You have to think about, what do I shoot in order to tell the viewers something? And how would this work in the edit? Is it too complicated? Is it all in the wrong order? Does this make sense? And I think the problem with that framework is that a lot of the times, life doesn't make sense. And when you try to make sense of something that doesn't have inherent sense, that's a job in itself, isn't it? Maybe sometimes we just let it not make sense. Anyway, let's put on pants and get started with our day. It's a busy one. Ironically, I think within the last few years, our turn on highlighting mental health and the importance of maintaining it has made us out of touch with our bodies. And sometimes you should prioritize your body over your mind because only then can you let your mind take a break. Take a break. And remember, just like communities, your body works together with your mind. It's all one thing. Pro tip for the days you're feeling bad, put on some cute socks. It works for me. <laughs> Hey, yo.
，我觉得人是想说服自己怎么样就能说服自己怎么样的。我妈是非常能说服自己的人，可是她自己等于这样当了自己的最大的敌人。Yes, I am wearing the same sweater again three days in a row. What you gonna do about it? Isn't it about time you let me live my life? Because I have quite a busy day today, I'm just gonna eat some cereal. My favorite right now is Raisin Bran. And what I'm gonna do is separate out all the raisins, put it in a jar, just to see how much of raisins come in one box because they keep saying two scoops, but it don't feel like two scoops. I have two questions, first of all. It used to say two scoops right on the front. Doesn't do that now, it's just tiny on top. Second question, why is there only two scoops in here and only two scoops in there, the family size box? Shouldn't the family size box have more than two scoops if it's, you know, more? Technically, this has 50% more cereal than this. So technically, this should have 50% more raisins than this, meaning two scoops here, three scoops here. We're about to find out. Stay tuned. The drama of it all. Capitalism. I personally think there's only three servings in this 16.6 ounce box, but this is way smaller than it should be. The box tells me there's seven. When do the lies stop? By the end of this week, we will figure out exactly how small are these two scoops. Maybe the next episode will cover the 24 ounce box. And yes, you may send fan mail and love letters in the form of Raisin Bran to me. Thank you. And yes, the proper way to do cereal is cereal first and then milk. And you add milk and cereal as you go. And yes, this is the proper ratio of milk to cereal. You want half of it overwhelmed and half of it above the surface. Your bowl has to be adequately large enough so that you can toss all the cereal and immerse them as you see fit. Perfect bowl of cereal. You're welcome. There is something so reminiscent of wet dog food when it comes to eating cereal. It just makes it so nostalgic. It kind of reminds me of the dog I never had growing up but always wanted. And in some weird way, I've become it. I've become the dog I've always wanted but never had. That's pretty beautiful in a way. This is gonna be a weird week, y'all. You're probably not ready for it. And neither am I, but here we are, again. We're gonna brew some jasmine tea, but I'm gonna take it out of the tea bag first because these plastic fancy looking sachets are actually really not good because they melt the microplastics into your tea. So if you like plastic, go ahead and use it. But if you don't, tea leaves. And no, I did not buy tea bags. These were gifted to me. I just spent the rest of the day filming videos for and just buying these blueberries for a dollar each for grandma and oranges for two bucks and now i'm really 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 hungry and tired and we're gonna eat some leftovers from my lunch fiascos leftovers include polenta with roasted veggies and spiced up hummus and raw carrots thank god for microwaves and you know what i think it's time to peel some i hope you enjoyed that listen it may not be glamorous, but I can assure you it's pretty delicious. It has butter and milk, thyme and carrots, and I don't need to explain my life to you. Just watch me eat shit. You know what I think we do need though? More cheese. And I think I'm gonna go for some blue cheese. I know it's gonna rile some of you up. What can I say? It's absolutely perfect. Creamy, tart, tangy, salty, punchy with that corn. It also goes extremely well with our little tiny fried tomatoes. A little bit of sweet, a little bit of umami, a little bit of fuck. For lunch, for those video shoots, I also ended up eating a liver toast with tomatoes. Aaron also got me this sankaya from Khao Kong. I smell pan And it is basically a steamed pumpkin custard. I'm very excited to dig into this. Oh baby. I wanna try this custard first. It smells so much like pandan. It does taste like pandan. It almost has a texture of something that was set with agar agar. Not quite as smooth as gelatin. Mm. Somewhere between pudding and leftover rice pudding. Does that make sense? It kind of tastes like rice pudding, but homogenized. Really nice and solid and hefty. So good. As for the pumpkin, this is kabocha squash, one of my favorite squashes. And mom used to bake this all the time. So good. And now for a bite all together. That's the way you do it. I'm gonna shower and when we come back, we're gonna bake some brownies because we're going to a picket line tomorrow. And I'm gonna bring some treats. But first, some chocolate. Mmm, lead. Delicious. I'm back and cleaner than ever before because I spilled an entire bottle of tea tree oil on myself. Minty fresh. The brownies I'm about to make are not vegan, but they use aquafaba, which is basically the cooking liquid you get left over from cooking chickpeas. Mmm, bean water. 
I made these when I was making a bean salad for Dan. I'll link the live stream up here somewhere, but basically if you buy canned chickpeas, you can drain that liquid and use it here too. I'm gonna go ahead and make a double batch of these brownies just because I don't know how much I'm gonna end up bringing tomorrow. There might be a lot of people. Hopefully. It's a picket line. The more, the merrier. We're gonna be melting one stick of butter and we're gonna be smashing and chopping up some chocolate to melt it down as well. You want to avoid overheating the chocolate in case you burn the bottom in your microwave. I like to go until it's half melted and then just keep whisking to let that residual heat melt the rest of it. You want all of it to be liquidy and shiny, just like this. This is a one bowl deal, so I'm gonna melt everything together, whisk in the aquafaba, whisk in some brown sugar. I'm using Chinese red sugar here. It's a lot more molasses heavy than your brown sugar. Some granulated white sugar, a little bit of kosher salt, any kind of extract you want, plus flour, cocoa, baking soda. Yes, I know, we're cutting it very close. I realize that you should use a bigger bowl than I am using here. All I ask is that you learn from my mistakes, okay? It's fine if one of us makes it. It's not good if all of us make it. Just let me handle the mistakes, you watch and learn. You're welcome. We're going to fold it until everything's nicely combined and we're gonna go ahead and grease our pan. We'll get there, just We'll get there. This brownie can be somewhat sticky because of the aquafaba's moisture content, so if you want to line it with parchment, be my guest. You know what's funny is when we started making this brownie, I knew this bowl wasn't gonna fit, but then I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And I feel like this is kind of how I make my mistakes in life too. Sometimes I know they're gonna be mistakes, and I do them anyway. So does that mean that they're not mistakes? Human psychology, man, we are fucked up. Stir to your heart's content. The good thing about brownie batter is you don't care if you have too much gluten development because if you're like me, you like them chewy anyway. You know what time it is. We're going to preheat our oven to 350 degrees or 325 for my overheated oven and we're going to pour in this batter to our tins. In a separate bowl, I'm going to mix together tahini and sweetened condensed milk into a light drizzly consistency and to one of these brownie batter tins, I'm going to swirl this in on top. So the condensed milk made the tahini seize a little. I'm gonna try to stream in a little bit of milk to loosen it up. It would appear that the theme tonight is bowls too small for the task. But you know what? Eventually, we make it. On top of the plain brownie, we'll just toss some extra chocolate chips and a little bit of crunchy sea salt. We'll bake this for about 25 to 28 minutes until the tops are dry and the edges just begin to release. In the meantime, I'm gonna put some milk in our little brownie batter bowl and we're gonna eat some cereal and uh, cool off for the night so I can go do my farm school homework. The day never ends. It's okay though, brownie batter makes everything and yes, before you sue me, there's raw flour in the batter. I do not recommend eating it. It might give you foodborne illnesses. You do you. You deal with the consequences. And for those of you who are so curious about the farm school, I'll link their website up there somewhere. You're welcome. Chocolate tahini raisin bran, underrated. This flavor profile reminds me a lot of when I used to go in college and steal all the grape nuts, drown it in chocolate silk, add raisins, chopped peanuts, and peanut butter, and then take it back to my dorm room to eat in my depression slump. Good times, great memories. Thanks, college. I'm gonna let the tahini topped one bake for just a few minutes longer, but this one looks done. The top is set. It bounces back a little bit when I push my finger in gently and the sides are peeling away from the pan. I'm gonna let them cool completely overnight with a towel draped over so they don't dry out and no dusty bits fall on top and I'll see you tomorrow. Let's cut some brownies. Last night at around midnight, I slid them into the fridge just so they could solidify even better for the cut. Because of how moist and fudgy they are, the colder they are, the easier they are to cut. To give people option, I like to cut some pieces smaller and some pieces bigger. Not everyone's appetite is the same. My personal opinion is that the bits stuck to the pan are always the most delicious ones. This may look cakey, but I can guarantee you it reads as a chewy. A little bit of almond extract goes a long way to make it a little bit more mysterious. Nothing quite like straight sugar to start your day off wrong, you know what I mean?
The layer of tahini somehow makes this brownie taste even more vanilla-y, which is fascinating. Either way, you can't go wrong. I like them both. Two tips, when packing baked goods, I like to use the parchment paper it was baked on to create layers so that none of the layers smudge into each other. Tip two, wet your knife. Rinse it clean to get clean cut lines. You're welcome. Our brownies are packed and ready to go, but for some semblance of health, I think I need some milk and cereal. And obviously you can disagree with me, but milk, cereal, in a pint container, best possible vessel. Something so satisfying about it. Brings back memories of good old restaurant days. Everything was eaten in a pint container and it just fits so well in your hand. It's so tall and contained, ergonomic, efficient, everything you're supposed to be as a human robot in the kitchen and literally everywhere else in society. God, I love bran flakes. The picket line was amazing. It was a sight to behold. There were so many people and so much energy and I'm very glad to have gotten out of the apartment. But then my period came and now I'm exhausted and farm school is in less than 50 minutes and I must eat something or I will crash and burn. So leftovers it is. I'm gonna eat our little cup of polenta along with all of these cheeses. We have chocolate, we have almonds, we have this huge ass apple. Maybe I'll finish Aaron's pumpkin treat with a little bit of whole milk yogurt or maybe I'll eat some peanut butter and figs. Why not all of the above? Why choose? Also, I hate to be that person, but man, kids are annoying. Nothing beats mold on a bad day. Something about this leftover polenta smells like buttered popcorn and it is making my day perfect. This is almost making me want to make a blue cheese corn muffin. I think it would be quite delicious. Maybe we'll make it tomorrow after I come back from my tattoo. Another one you say? Why yes, what else am I gonna do with my time on this earth? Generate profit for large corporations like YouTube? When are we gonna learn? I don't know about y'all, but I've decided that my time here will be spent eating trash and getting tattoos and maybe a septum piercing. We'll see about that. Worried about mental health? Don't. Tattoos are my therapy. They cause pretty much the same thing too. And they're both kind of painful that you volunteer yourself up for. 
They both make you question your life choices. It's usually just one person giving you the service and they charge by the hour. And there are many out there who provide the same service, but you don't get along with all of them. And sometimes it can be hard to find. Both of them can be very intimate. Both are touchy-feely, but one is more touchy and the other one more feely. And usually the effects of each of those sessions stay with you for life. They become a part of you, sink into your skin. They might even change the way you view yourself. Hopefully in due time, they both give you some healing. All of this to say, I think tattoos should be covered by your health insurance, you know? Anyway, support your unions and maybe you won't need therapy. Maybe it's not you after all. Maybe it's all of us. Maybe it's time we admit it. Cheese boards are overrated. If you've never given yourself the pleasure of biting a chunk off from the block, do it today. Treat yourself. Feel the friction between your teeth and the cheese. Taste the melting of the creams and the salt. Experience everything completely. Off to farm school I go. Well, today's off to a weird start. I turned off my phone, overslept my alarm, scared the shit out of my uncle in Beijing, went to grandma late, she was crying by the time I got there, and now I'm here with about half an hour left to go before I have to leave for my tattoo. <sighs> let's eat some breakfast. I'm not sure why, but I've really been hungering for some oatmeal, so let's make some oats. In my fridge, I found some leftover bailey soaked figs with a lot of baileys and these two really expensive maraschino cherries. Perfect. Now, yes, technically before tattoo, you should never, ever, ever do alcohol. It's probably a blood thinner or something like that, but we're going to cook this until the alcohol is mostly gone. And anyway, that bailey soaked figs has been in my fridge for like two months. It's probably not that potent anymore, right? Okay, so the way I like to make oatmeal is melt some butter into the pot over medium heat. We're going to toast the oats with a little bit of salt until they're nice and fragrant. Then I'm gonna go in with some milk, our Bailey's figs, as well as some water. I'm just going to keep adding in water as I see fit to make it the consistency that I want. I really like my oats quite mushy, so there's no risk of overcooking it. I like to use Bob's Red Mill. They're one of the companies out there who are worker owned, but you do you, girl. Could I make these oats more glamorous looking than they are right now? Sure, I can, but ain't nobody got time for that today. A little sweet, a little creamy, a little chewy. Very warm. The cherries are bright and candy-like, the oats are nice and earthy and wholesome, and the cinnamon, just the right amount of heat. The figs are nicely hydrated and they've also softened quite a bit, so they almost taste like little unctuous bits of oatmeal just clumped together. I think I can taste the alcohol from that oatmeal now. safe in one piece. I'm gonna eat an apple, I'm gonna eat some cereal, and then I think we gotta do that cornbread, blue cheese thing. It's just banging around in my head all day. One box of 16.6 .6 ounce raisin bran later, we find out that two scoops of raisins is just about three quarters cup. Cool. Is it capitalism? Or is it just us? Side note, frozen brownies, way superior than room temp brownies. What's worse, sugar or alcohol? And yes, I do freeze my peanut butter too. My secret is, most days, I don't wanna cook. There it is. You have the truth now. If I were to be totally honest with you, I would tell you that I ate half the jar of peanut butter and half the pound of all those figs. And now I'm extremely depressed and don't wanna cook anymore because I just tore a hole into this jumpsuit that I thrifted today. All kinds of disappointed with myself from today and before. But instead, let's just bake some cake that I don't wanna bake. Sometimes nobody cares about the truth. It's just not entertaining, you know? Once you start telling the truth, it's hard to stuff it back in. I think we should take a shower first, reset the mood. All right then, 
We ready to do this shit? As it usually goes, I will not be measuring anything out. We'll just wing it. I'll tell you the amounts as we go and we'll see how it turns out. Capiche, capiche. 40 grams of butter plus 85 grams of sugar. We're gonna go ahead and cream this together until it's incorporated. And I'm gonna drizzle in about 20 grams of olive oil, which will mean we have about a quarter cup of fat total. Going in with a dash of mesquite, a little shake of salt, one teaspoon baking powder, 220 grams of avocado, and 171 grams of cornmeal. Looks a little loose. Let's go in with a little bit more. 230 grams of cornmeal it is. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat the oven to 350 degrees. As is, this tastes pretty good. We're gonna add in some blue cheese towards the end, but let's think about baking vessel. I could make a large pancake cornbread thing, or we could make a cake. We can make a loaf. We can make muffins or mini muffins. The options, they are endless. How do we choose? Personally, I'm really feeling mini muffins, but I don't have liners for these, which means knocking them out will be intense. It might be a trial. It might be a tribulation. It might be a trauma, even. Will we take the risk? We shall. Life is for regrets. No regrets, no life. Having said that, we will be spraying the shit out of this tray just to ensure release. I'm all for being reckless, but you know, be smart about it. Oh, we're ready for this thing. Going in with a little bit of cracked pepper, just for a little bit of depth and spice. For the underdogs that are looking like they're missing a little bit of action, we're gonna add in a little bit of this cheddar gruyere cheese just to make up for it. Everyone deserves extra cheese, but especially the little guys. A final crunch of black pepper on top and into the oven we go. I'm thinking maybe about 12 minutes to start. They are definitely not ready. We're gonna need like five more minutes. In the meantime, we'll make ourselves some tea because we deserve it. That's a lie because none of us deserve anything, but lies are what keep us going sometimes, you know? Necessary evils, as some people say. The muffins are starting to rise up a little bit. The surface is looking a little bit more matte. However, I don't see golden edges and the cheese isn't quite toasty enough yet. So I'm gonna keep going until I see those golden edges and a little bit of peeling away from the tin. I think at about 22 minutes in, we are ready to take it out. The most important thing for me is to make sure that I see the sides peeling, which means they are definitely baked. I'm gonna use an offset spatula to run along the edges to make sure they are clean releases. Because this is a gluten-free cake, I'm gonna leave the rest of them in the tin to cool down completely so they can really moisturize themselves. Right now, if you fidget with them, they will fall apart. It's quite crumbly. The grains of cornmeal weren't exactly the finest, so there's not a lot of structure holding them together. Um, I just remember I didn't even put an egg in. I thought I was going to, but I did not. I even took it out and put it on the counter, but you know, depression. What you gonna do? Anyway, let's have a taste, shall we? The smell is that of cornmeal, blue cheese, and Gruyere cheddar, which together smells a little bit like truffle, especially with that cracked black pepper element. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, the aquafaba. Mm-hmm, it's all in there. Somehow it's making it smell like truffle. Fancy. Mmm, mmm. <laughs> it basically tastes mostly like a normal cornbread, slightly sweeter than you would expect it, until you hit the cheesy parts, and then it turns a little bit weird. <laughs> the cheddar gruyere bits taste like normal brunch fare. A little bit greasy, a little bit buttery, something on your biscuit. The cornmeal is pleasantly buttery, tasting a little bit like popcorn vibes, but when you hit the blue cheese, it tastes like mushrooms truffle related. I'm just saying, if you like truffles and you can't afford it, but you can afford Trader Joe's blue cheese, this one, you should try it. I think we're gonna wrap tonight here because I just remember that I'm bleeding from two different places in my body right now and I deserve some rest. Deserve, not deserve. You know what I mean. Just went to see grandma. She thought my corn muffins were too sweet. And now we are off to Chinatown to meet up with my friend. I'm gonna take the subway there. I'm gonna try on my new foods and break them in.
We're going to go meet at Taiwan Pork Chop House in Doyer Street. It's a cool little corner of Chinatown, and my favorite thing to order there is the ice mochi bowl. It comes with fruit or herbal jelly and lots of random things like peanuts and craisins and raisins, crushed ice on the bottom, a sweet treat that's not too sweet. You gotta like go all the way in for oh, yeah. the herb jelly. The texture of this yeah. is like really intense. Oh. <laughs> that looks good. No, it looks Are you so excited? good. I'm so excited. Yeah. I just love Taiwanese sausage. It's like also look at how like it's like like Fatty. like all the fat. Yeah. They're also known for their savory dishes. They're all pretty good and all decently priced. The only downside is it's all plastic. <laughs> Then I'm thinking we'll walk around in the area, find somewhere else to eat, chat, and just exist. Be in the company of friends. I also went to Lion City to meet up with Giannis for dinner. What are you thinking? We had some questionable dim sum and these nicely thinly sliced cold spicy beef. I think you're supposed to attach these to the this chips. This is a new thing. They have plastic chopsticks. They changed something. Must be fancy. This just feels like additional waste that doesn't need to happen. It's I'm very Chinese. Sure it inside. It yeah, I guess you just hope for the best. No, I've handled using my dirty hands. Yeah, and they're so long. What the hell? I don't like this. Mm. I like it. I don't think it. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good flavor. It feels very soft, like cuttable with your chopsticks. Wow. Are you gonna do it? You did it. Oh my god. Fascinating mushroom texture. This is a dumpling? This is a dumpling in the shumai section. Mmm. I don't know about that. No? The wrapper is so soft. It is very soft. The wrapper has no chew, no bite. It fades away like, like cornstarch slurry. Like a pudding almost. Mm -hmm. The shumai look promising. One has wobbled over. I'm I'm struggling. There well, we go. Well, they're shumai. They're always pretty solid, right? Is this cuttable with chopsticks? Well, maybe. Pineapple pastry for New Year's that we got for free. Delightful. If you've ever had Taiwanese pineapple cakes, these are amazing with that filling. Oh, that's so pineapple-y. Oh, yeah. mm, that's really good. Yum. Happy New Year. Unfortunately, those boots are gonna need quite a bit of breaking in. My feet are suffering. I'm fairly tired and tomorrow is gonna be a full day at farm school, one of our very first and few in-person classes and gatherings. So in preparation for that, I'll be making that millet cornmeal congee again in the instant pot. As always, taste your work. It may be gruel, but we want to make a good gruel. Make sure you know what you're feeding the people. As well as cutting up some century eggs to share with everybody. I'll be making a sauce, soy sauce and black vinegar and sesame oil, and I'll bring it on the side for anyone who has any allergies, and we'll just hope some people are open to trying these weird ass looking eggs. But right now, I think I'm gonna eat some corn muffins because I've been yearning for that truffle Taste. Very buttery, slightly sweet, pretty salty from the cheese, and still very crumbly. I think we're gonna need to nuke these a little bit. They smell so good. Mm. Hot, delicious. Wow, cheese, folks. Cheese and corn. They definitely need the reheat. Absolutely marvelous warm. I will be making this again. What would happen if we put peanut butter on one of these? And yeah, frozen peanut butter at that. Mmm. I'm finding out you can't lose with peanut butter on your side. We're gonna have our peanut butter and depression figs. Who needs therapy animals when you have peanut butter? Sometimes depression peanut butter needs depression cereal. And even though nothing can fill that hole inside you, you're sure as hell not gonna stop trying. That's what she said, isn't it? I'm just too good at these. And then afterwards, you cool down with some frozen almonds. Am I a weird eater? Hell yeah, I am. I know what good is. And obviously we have to have a little bit of sugar to top off the night. Frozen brownies just hit different. To prep the century eggs, we're just going to peel them and slice them into eighths. That way everybody has a chance to grab a slice. My favorite way to peel these is actually to roll them and crush the shells lightly while they're still vacuum sealed. That way you get to crack it without puncturing into the skin if you're gentle enough and all of the mess is contained within this bag. To get any shell debris off, just rinse. Chef's treat. Into our sauce, I'm also going to grate some fresh ginger and garlic. With the rest of this knob of ginger, I'm gonna make some ginger tea for my period cramps. I find that this works better than most painkillers out there for me. Not gonna say it works this way for everyone, but ginger, pretty cheap, accessible, and uh, I don't know, nature's miracle, I guess. 
See you tomorrow, I guess. I woke up very early today, went to go see grandma, and then we got on the train to go to Bed-Stuy. Bed-Stuy is the location of the Hattie Carthen Community Garden where we were meeting for farm school from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We looked at this beautifully preserved and protected magnolia tree and we looked at the park nearby. We took a walk around the neighborhood. We also picked some juniper berries. I did not know that this was what fresh juniper berries look like. Pretty poppin'. Um, don't go around eating berries that you don't know unless you have a professional guiding you. Don't sue me if you die. Don't die. Y'all when I say it was cold, it was cold. I was shivering towards the last two hours where my hands were just shaking and quaking. But we built a fire, we danced a little bit, we clapped a little bit, we shared a lot of stories, and we shared a lot of food. There was so much food, but I gotta say, my favorite was a sweet bean soup, abitrula con dulce, and it was just chock full of creaminess and sweetness, cloves and cinnamon with bits of sweet potato in there, and y'all know how much I like my mush, and that was mush heaven. I'm super tired, I think I'm gonna go take a shower, maybe a nap, maybe sleep forever, or if I wake up, we'll cook something, and if I don't, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> it's a busy week. What did I tell you? When the double eyelid comes out, you know I'm tired. I showered, and I ended up canceling my plans for tomorrow with friends because I am just that depressed. Your favorite videos of mine are ones where I cook a lot, random a lot, and joke a lot. This will not be one of them. Some days when I realize that my social battery is out and my mind is shattered, I just need to be alone. So tomorrow, day eight, the final day of this video, we will be alone. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go watch some TV, drink some water, and get some sleep. It be like that sometimes. It could be worse. You may have noticed that this week I have barely cooked. This is usually what happens when I'm busy and depressed. Now I think if my brain were any more conditioned to be normal, I would have been like, fuck it, this is not the week to make a video. But who are we kidding? This is exactly the type of content I would make. I mean, for a society that only rewards us for showing our most productive selves, what would it mean for me to show you much ado about nothing at all? I guess you'll have to let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this video. For today, I'm going to fry all the things for grandma, go visit her, and when we come back, I guess we'll cook something. It's been a while. Oh, today is Sure. I'm saying today you shouldn't do too much, right? Yes, yes, yes. You do Oh, and I do want to pick out all the raisins from that larger box of Raisin Bran just to see how much we get in that 1.5 time box. What are you trying to say? Like, get your shit together, Portia. Well, here we have it, folks. The 16.6 ounce box versus the 24 ounce box in terms of raisins is not that big of a difference. Lies, they're everywhere. I think you're better off buying the 16 ounce box because technically I think you get more raisins out of it. Per unit price, of course. But you know, since we're here, we gotta weigh it just to be more scientific because the eye deceives to no ends. The 16.6 ounce box contains 99 grams of raisins and the 24 ounce box contains 126 grams. Looks like I missed a few. The nature of science. And now that we've completed this absolutely pointless exercise, we can go on with our lives. And that is to say, I will eat some bran cereal with milk while watching White Lotus because when you're depressed, anything you can do to stay afloat is fine. Staying afloat is the name of the game. Just don't drown and you're doing great. When it comes to the cycles of depression, I've learned that they are like seasons. And just like how you don't fight summer and winter, there's no point in fighting it. Our culture tells you that you should seek therapy and take meds and meditate and do all of these things, but really sometimes life just sucks. And when those times come, all you do is to breathe and exist. And that's all I'm trying to do here. You know what I'm saying? I think sometimes the most depressing part of life is seeing all the patterns repeat themselves to no end. The monotony of everyday living makes you feel like you're going nowhere. But this is strange logic because we all have comfort foods that we turn to and they comfort us because of their consistency and monotony. 
Somehow, no matter how bad your day is, cereal will always taste like cereal and peanut butter and fish yes. and chocolate. And so when I lack consistency in the ideal ways of life, I find it in all of my beloved snacks. So I think for lunch, I'm going to cook the only vegetable fruit in my fridge, which is tomatoes. And I'm gonna make something that mom always used to make for me when I used to visit her. We're gonna make some stir-fried tomato and eggs. And instead of rice this time, we'll eat it over our leftover millet congee from yesterday. This is a simple dish. It's an amazing dish. And sometimes life can be quite simple and quite amazing. And yes, this reminds me of her every time medium heat. We're going to pour in the eggs, season it with salt, pepper, white pepper. Slowly scramble that until it's just barely set and then we'll transfer it out into a bowl. Back on the heat the pan goes with a little touch more of oil. We're going to bloom our garlic. We're going to slice our tomatoes. I like to have these cherry tomatoes so that we can control the burst and they cook a little bit faster this way. We're going to add in salt pepper, white pepper, whatever you want, including sugar if you'd like. And we're going to cook it until the tomatoes are juicy and jammy and slightly broken down. We're gonna fold our eggs back in off of the heat and we're going to warm up our little millet polenta congee and pour this tomato egg mixture on top and serve. The best thing about this dish is if you want more tomatoes, add more tomatoes. If you want more eggs, add more eggs. Do or don't, all your choice. Tomatoes are tart, sweet, and salty. A little bit of peppery heat on top. The eggs are creamy and soft. The polenta and millet is creamy and soft. And this is the perfect comfort food for today. Thanks, mom. The same story can be happy or sad depending on where you end it. That bitch knows what she's talking about. She's gotta be my favorite. If you end it in the middle of everything, well, is it still a story? I guess that all depends on whether you're a process person or an ending person. Monday came and the girl woke up. It felt a little different today, but she wasn't sure why. Don't look so evil now. Freddy, are you angry at me? Yeah, me too. I hate myself some days. It was raining outside and gray, but she got a full night's sleep. A modern miracle, one could say. But whatever it was, it seemed better. I tried to give myself some extra vitamins, but I don't think I'll like this. I think I just like trash. Sometimes you just gotta try it to know you don't like it. There's just no other way to find out. Maybe it was just time doing its thing, making sure that she gained perspective and distance from the things that were hurting her last week. She realized that sometimes she has no control, and that is for the best. There is a certain freedom in not being in control. There is a certain freedom in not having direction. Or maybe it was because that she asked her friend Samira to come visit her and that she would have the opportunity to cook something for her friend. She decided that she would start with some leftover baked goods for her friend to enjoy while she made a soup. In the cupboard above the microwave, she found stuff that her mom had left behind for her. Silver ear fungus that she would rinse and soak under water. She also found agar agar that her mom had probably purchased at least a decade before because these prices we don't see anymore. From her own pantry, she found creamed coconut that expired last year with a nub of ginger. And she decided that with a little bit of sugar, she can make a sweet soup with all of these things. Sure, it doesn't sound like a conventional meal, but it was what her heart wanted. And some days, it is really just the easiest and best thing to follow your heart. You see, it had been a year or more since she had opened these things that her mom left behind. And it was just the Lunar New Year, where memories of celebrating with her mom flooded back in pieces and made her feel more broken than she realized. She thought she was suffering from a broken heart because of a boy, but she had a broken heart in more ways than one. As it usually works, things compound and confuse, and it becomes hard to disentangle all the loops and knots. Whatever it was, to take something and make it into something else is always a transformative process that gives her life. Not only does it feed her, it feeds her, if that makes sense. And it's always better when she can feed someone else too. Maybe she was learning that just because someone leaves her life doesn't mean that they've left her. 
After all, they have affected her and changed her in so many undetectable ways. Mom left, and other people will too, even if they don't die. And the grief will always come, and she will let it be. And from this, she will make something of it. It's not like she has a choice anyway. Regret works in funny ways because it makes you think like you could have done otherwise to avoid it. But really, can you imagine a life without regrets? Who would you be then? Fully formed, fully aware, fully yourself, and completely stagnant. And in a way, to become that stagnant is a sort of death, no? So then, she decided to live, make all the mistakes. It was a little bit like accessing a language that she no longer knew. Alongside the sweet soup, she would also serve her friend some freshly fried Chinese-style donuts. And just whatever she has in her fridge, she scrounged together to make a meal. The way she lives her life, it's casual, but abundant. Have you ever had silver ear before? I don't think so. <sighs> it's just really crunchy and not much taste. <laughs> oh, fuck that mm -hmm. Went to Flushing, got a bunch of stuff, $100. Mm. She also decided that it would be easy enough to make a fishball curry out of that leftover coconut milk mixture, so she added some Thai curry paste into the pot let it melt all together, and she put in some of her frozen fish balls. And that was it. Simple. The end. <laughs>